Welcome back, girls and boys, to another exciting Duckman Cycles video production. Today we're back with Rob's 1972 Super Volks Rod. You may remember that in a video earlier this week we were repairing some crash damage in the rear left suspension area. That proved to be quite difficult to get apart because of the beautifully and artistic new form that it had taken. It just didn't lend itself to being removed as easily as stock parts would have ordinarily. But we got through it. The suspension should be in proper working order now. However, the brakes were also damaged in the crash, and today we're going to try to sort that out and also correct some of the previous owner's problems that we uncovered. If you've been following me for a while, you know that guy, that Ford Chevy Mopar guy that used to own this car. The one that made a mess out of just about everything on this car you've seen me sorting through this summer. The rear disc brakes on it are a custom install just gone horrible. And as you can figure, brakes are not an item that you want to be installed incorrectly. They were a danger, so a lot needs to be fixed here. But before we start tearing up those brakes, please give me a licky likey, comment and subscribe, and don't forget to plug that dingle belly so you get all the updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links, and thanks for watching, guys! Here comes the intro. All right, well, we are back. We got as far as mounting that shock up on there. The rear arm's been replaced. I need to work on the CV joint and axle. I need to put the brakes back together on here because this did have rear discs and that's currently got a drum on it, so I gotta remove that sucker. The arm is all white because I did throw some phosphoric acid on it just to clean it up. I probably should have thrown some paint on it and stuff and prepared it a little better before I put it together. But that's about as far as I got with it because I wanna put this car together as quickly as possible. Rob wants to drive it because he's driving a gas guzzling Ford F-150 right now that runs on seven cylinders and it's been a issue for him and he won't let me fix it. <laughs> so if I can get the truck away from him by giving him back this car then I can fix his truck. But anyway, I don't like working on Fords, not my cup of tea, but any help in a friend, you know. You do what you gotta do, right guys? Of course, the dog's been quiet all morning long. Now I come out here and it's gonna bark like crazy. Bastard. Alright. First things first. This drum is seized. It's gonna need to come off of there. I guess we'll start by just getting these lug nuts out of here. We are going to use these. I'll show you how in a minute. Okay, this clip has to come off. Come on now. Here we go. That's a really big clip on there, too. It's exceptionally big clipped. The big clipped bastard. Yeah, close up. There you go. Get in here. Oh, I hear my dad yelling at me right now. These are inherited. Oh my God, I didn't even put that much force on them. Where the hell were these made? These things are shit. Oh my God. I barely pried on it at all. Well, they're already busted. You know, let's see if the other side breaks as easily. No, that side's not breaking as easy. It was probably already fatigued, but anyway. My dad is yelling at me from above. Something my brother and I have been saying since we lost dad. Every time that we do something we know dad wouldn't have liked. My father was a good man, but he was a very angry man. Especially as he got older, but I can relate to that. You just get really sick and tired of people's shit every day. Doing the same stupid shit endlessly not listening causing more problems your father's like I am he's a fixer so you're endlessly fixing and cleaning up junk case in point this car after somebody else did something they shouldn't have done yeah. story of my life now come on pin get out of here ah. that's interesting it broke up in the bend. 
I have not ever seen that happen. Alright, it's out. Now, for sure, uh huh. This has been sitting out in the yard for I don't know how long. It used to, well, you know, I do know how long because it used to be in my shed. And my shed disappeared in September of 2020. You know what? Oh my god, I think today is exactly two years. So I know exactly how long this thing's been out in the yard. The shed blew away, and this thing was laying on the ground behind the bus. All right. This needs to go on here now. That's how do I want to do this? I imagine I'll probably do it this way. There's a rhyme to my reason here. I'll explain in a moment. Oh jeez. Should have lubricated these too. This is what they call a torque dude. And the reason why I mounted this thing on the right hand side is because I need to turn this to the left. And this amplifies the force that I put into it by about tenfold. So now I can just use a little ratchet like this and just simply loosen it up. And that nut should turn. This has never failed me. Although a few times I have put so much strength into it myself, leaning into this, that I've chipped teeth out of it. But uh, doing what I've done, pushing it down this way, it allows me to turn into itself. So even though this thing has no e-brake on it and it's not got a wheel or something else to stop it from turning, often I can just release them this way without having to do any any uh, a locking or blocking of the wheel or anything like that. So let's see if it turns. Oh, looks like we're gonna get lucky here. Yeah, it's going. I mean, it does require some force, but I didn't have to put a breaker bar or any nonsense on it here. But I always like to turn this into itself, just like this here, rather than having to ratchet out here somewhere. came off that easy. Now here's a part that noobs never seem to understand. I always tell them turn it around, put it on here this way, and then turn it like a crank. Then you can just remove the nut. And that's it. Our axle nut is off. Kind of uneventful. All right. Now our gear comes back up. like stuck stuck. There we go. All right, yeah, this here is a heavy duty drum puller. If you don't own one of these and you have an old Volkswagen or you work on any old Volkswagens, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> this is the only good way to get one of these drums off without smashing the crap out of them. I'll show you how this works in just a second here. I really like this tool. It's a little spendy, but it makes the job so much easier. Come on, you bastard. All right. It's just gonna be frustrating, right? Ah, oh, I've never had a problem with it before, but today it's gonna be annoying.
Now we're not going to tighten them up yet because we got to put the center section back on. on here. Okay. We'll go ahead and get that snug up. We'll run our lug nuts in. Now, one of two things is going to happen here. The drum is either going to come off or the axle is going to get pushed in. <laughs> now, because the CV joint is detached on the opposite side, the axle might be the first part to come out because that actually might move more easily. But if that's going to be a fight, and what I'll do is I'll just put the CV joint back on, one, run one bolt into it, and it should be good to go. Anyway, it's just a matter of tightening this. And yeah, I was right, the axle's going. Okay, stop right there. All right, I just simply wadded it up in there. I didn't even bother putting the bolts in it. But as I'm turning this now, you can see that drum is now coming off. Effortlessly, no smashing anything, no bashing things with hammers, no cursing, no beating on it for an hour. And all that rust in there. <laughs> Makes job much, much easier. <clears throat> All right, looking good. Let's get this drum out the way. Boy, this stuff is dirty. That's interesting. A washer fell out of there. Oh, it's not a washer. That's the clip to the spring pins that go into the, the brakes in here. This looks like it's mostly shot backing plate might be good and the little cover that goes in here is actually in good shape too hey we got us a 14 right. and we got us a boomer how's it going here boomer oh my these are really tight one loose boomer you just got to be a jerk when I'm working don't you stop biting I love you too go away fuck off Don't want to take no for an answer. Go away. Ugh. Go away. <laughs> you can't say I'm abusing him because he thinks it's a game. Go away. Ugh. All right, broken free. Ow. That hurt. As soon as I heard you say ow, he ran off. <laughs> You might understand. All right, we're gonna reuse these bolts. It's actually looked to be in decent shape. Dirty, shitty mess. Hmm. You know what? Did I pull it off that way? It was on upside down. <laughs> it was on upside down. So for however many years this thing has been running on this car, it's, it's been on the wrong way. Well, how about that? Got our bearing spacer here. That one looks a little rough. 
I'll see if I can clean that up or maybe I can use one out of the other arm. <coughs> yep, so some idiot had that put on upside down. Okay, well, I guess I need to clean off my board down here. Look at this mess. All that dirt right here. Crap. Sitting in a shadow, but you guys catch the drift. All this dirt, dirt, rust, everything just fell out of that drum when I assembled it. Don't really need that in the clean stuff that we're about to work with here. Okay, where's my old arm? Right. This brake bracket on here it. needs to come off and go on to the new arm, so let's see, are these 14s or 15s on here? These are also 14s. And these came out without fighting. Now oh, that one's gonna be a fight. There's always gotta be one, right guys? Just the one. These bolts look pretty good. Might go and put them back on instead of the other ones. That's our brake bracket. You can see the angle that's in it. That's supposed to be there. And this was mounted, as you saw, going straight up and down. So the caliper sits on top of the uh, axle, and I don't think that's the right way to install this. And I'm gonna show you the way I think is correct, because we're gonna do it that way, and unless we have a fitment issue, that's how it's gonna stay. And this arm, meanwhile, can go away. All right, as I was saying, this component here needs to go backwards like that with the caliper on the rear. And the reason for the caliper being on the rear is it has two bleeder screws on it. And if it's sitting straight up and down, the bleeder screws are not in the top position. Whereas if it's over here, the top bleeder screw is the one that you would release to let the air bubbles out because of what do air bubbles do inside a brake fluid? They rise to the top. So some braino put that on upwards and I don't know, maybe some instruction manual called for it. That's not the way it should be. I'm gonna wipe these things down, clean them up just a little bit, and then we're gonna start reassembling this stuff on here. This doesn't have a gasket in it either. What I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna grease up the surfaces and slap it back together. We're not gonna to go too overboard on this thing. Being that this is not a swing axle, the transmission fluid will not leak out of here. This is just a place you just wanna stop water from getting in. stuff cleaned up a little bit. You're not gonna get the, the greasy stains off of it. You don't need to. You do need to get like dirt and things off of it. It looks like water didn't get in here even though it was sitting in the yard. The whole axle stub looks to be in pretty good shape. Yeah I think we're gonna be good. All right, as I said, that's gonna go backwards just like that. We're gonna put the old bearing cover back on because that one is just cleaner and just looks to be in better condition. The seals on it even appear to be in good shape here. All right. We'll just, ooh, even the O-ring is still on there. Oh, it does still have a seal on it. Okay, I'm not worried about it then, yeah. We're gonna go with it as is. Let me get in here, put a little grease in here though. This is one of those places where that seal needs to stay in good shape. And any grease that you can put in here will repel water in the future. Now this has, you see it better from the front side, two scallops on either side, right here. That's the side that faces down. Sometimes there's an extra hole on the bottom. And that hole is actually used to drain the transmission fluid in the event that your wheel bearing seals here uh, should leak. So that way the oil and stuff doesn't get into your brakes, at least that's the goal. Although anytime I've ever seen them leak, the brakes are always just full of goo. 
you know anything about transmission fluid it moves like moves like honey like molasses it's extra slow Find my torque wrench. And I'll get them torqued down. But meanwhile, we got this spacer in here, and this is tapered. You see, one side of it has a little tapering on it. Usually, I just put a little grease on it. You don't need to go overboard on this thing. Just get it coated. It goes in there just like that. Now, we have a spacer here. And I think this spacer went behind this rotor. I think it goes on the inside of this. I'm pretty sure what we're going to do then is we're just going to put it on here. We're going to see if everything looks like it's right. But I'm pretty sure that goes on the inside. If I'm wrong, I'll move it. But I think that's the way it came apart. Ordinarily, you'd put a spacer on the outside, so that does look a little weird to me. <clears throat> Alright. Caliper out here. Yeah, it looks like we're in the ballpark where it needs to go. Just put this nut on here and just. Snug it real quick and just see where everything lines up at. The goal here was to pull that axle back washer that was supposed to go behind there too that I didn't put. Yeah, we're not tight all the way yet. Okay. Looking to see if this nut's good or if it's got issues or what. Because it didn't look like it was going on there all the way. Those threads don't look bad. Let's try the other nut on there. Yeah, that nut went on like it was supposed to. This one might have something wrong with the threads on it. Doesn't mean it can't be used, it's just got an issue. That's on there tight now. All right, now let's see how this caliper aligns itself. And the answer is, it does not. Ha <laughs> ha, I knew something didn't look right when I took it apart. I didn't say nothing. But something just didn't look right. I think this space is supposed to go on the outside because that's the way I always find them. That's more like it. This goes on the outside. It's got dirt all over it. There we go. Let's see if that caliper lines up right. Oh, much better. That had been an issue before. Something just didn't look right about those calipers. It looked like they were off center. And they're off center by about, oh, a little more than half an inch. That looks like it might be like a, a 916th or so, you know. We're talking like 15 millimeters. That's about what it looks like. There you go. There's a 14 millimeter bolt. 15, 16 millimeters off. Yep, 
I was right. Okay. All right, now we know that, that how that's gonna go. That's looking good. This is the new caliper that I'm thinking I'm gonna use to replace the old one. I don't know if there was any damage done to it because the caliper itself, when it was up here, and that car went up and over that wheel, it hit the caliper. And I don't know, I don't know if I trust it or not. The bleeder valves on it were all bent up and you know what, we're just gonna use this. This is the one that's going back on. All right, let me find the bolts to it. If we get to anything else, we need to pull this back apart and grease up the inside, which is something I didn't do. Very important that this gets greased. Otherwise, the next time you try to go to take it apart, you're gonna have an issue. Spacer back in there. Right. Disc back on. What's going on here? There it goes. Okay. here to grease all this stuff. If there's any water intrusion at all, it'll at least be repelled by the grease. And To do that just yet. Besides, I don't know if this is going to work right because this has a five lug component on it here. It doesn't appear to line up with any of the lugs, but one. <laughs> Got to catch two. Now that's going to be a little bit of an issue. I might have to do it the old-fashioned way, just put a big breaker bar on it and jump up and down. Yeah, there's no other way that that's going to work. All right, well, and you can't use the right tool. This has, if I'm not mistaken, a Chevy, um, Chevy lug pattern on here. Okay, put our caliper on the back here. Oh man, this fits exactly like it's supposed to. I can't wait to see what the other side is doing because I'm going to have to look at that because remember the idiot put the caliper bolts on that were entirely too long and they were actually coming in contact with the rotor. You know, what kind of moron does that? You see now we have access to the bleeder screw which is up on top and these calipers do have two bleeder screws so they can go either direction. Well so, yeah it's going to be a whole lot easier to bleed the brakes on this thing. Just makes more sense. <clears throat> All right. Let's go ahead and wind them bolts in on the caliper. We'll come out here with the torque wrench again and get everything torqued down. And after I torqued down the caliper, I went and pulled through the brake line through the hole where it's supposed to go and obviously it's way too short because the caliper's way back here now. And I was anticipating that. So I've got some new brake line and we're just gonna make a new part. So I'm gonna pull it out here and uh, bend some forms. Then I'll get the ends flared and get everything set up so this way it should work. I'm probably gonna do the same thing, on, well we are gonna do the same thing on the other side. I have to take it apart anyway because the bolts were too long in that damn caliper and they're actually coming in contact with the rotor. All right, I gotta grab my flare wrenches and get that sucker out of there anyway, so we will do that. This is the line that got broken from the car wreck. That end got snapped off of it. This line is actually still good. It's not rusted or destroyed. I will put this in my bin of uh, parts that can be reused because I can reflare the ends. And it also has an end on it which is in good shape. So I will also reuse that end somewhere someday. It's nice having a flaring tool, man. A little expensive on the front end, but to have all these uh, parts and everything in the long run, it's paid for itself over just the last couple of years. All right, well, I managed to come up with a brake line that I had found in my stuff 
that I don't even have to recrimp it. It's almost the right shape even. And I think with a little bit of tweaking, I can make it work. Bends on it are a little ugly, but you know what? It just needs to work. It just needs to be good enough because it's a Volksrod rat rod looking thing. So it just needs to work. As long as they're not harmed and they're not leaking, which doesn't appear to be. You know what? They look more ugly because they appear to be coated with something. Anyway, we'll get this sucker installed on here. I think everything will be just fine. Well, that brake line worked out pretty good. I wish it were an inch longer, but the routing on it seemed to work out okay. Yeah, but just an inch more would have been great. An inch less and it never would have fit. <laughs> so we're good to go. All right, gonna snug up them ends and then uh, we gotta get this thing torqued down. All right, there's that CV joint. I wanted you guys to see this before I started pulling things apart. You can see there's bits of it inside of there. I need to harvest all of these bolts too because they're going to be reused. I wanna try to reuse these OEM bolts whenever we can because as we discovered, the Chinese replacement ones are garbage. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Knock the damn camera down. <laughs> this is not the prescribed method, but I wanna do it. There it goes. <laughs> now all them bolts will come out nice and easy. <laughs> Alright, you guys saw the cage on the CV joint was shattered, but look at that right here. It was actually a little hard getting this off of the axle. It's okay on that side, but over here, no, it's not. It's borked. Now it didn't want to come off the axle because it was kind of kind of crimped onto the splines. The splines, however, are fine because once I got this little piece budged past the end of the axle, it slipped right off. So the splines are fine, the axle's fine, the ZV joint on the other end appears to be fine because it still turns smoothly. It uh, looks like the end one, which is the one that had the extreme angle put onto it, was the one that got damaged. So um, yeah, that's where the problem lies. Otherwise, the inner, I'm gonna say, is fine. So I'm just gonna replace the outer. I happen to have an outer free. I'm just gonna slip it over the axle, clip it on, and bolt it back down to the axle and just be done with it. Well, there it is. Shit, all right, it's break time. And it's lunchtime, as a matter of fact. <laughs> a little creativity juice. Well, I pulled the CV joint off of this axle. So it was nice and sealed, greased up. There was nothing wrong with it, and it was just nice and easy to use it. So I simply unbolted it from here, unclipped it, removed it from the axle that it was on, and then I went and slipped it onto the axle that's here, returned the clip to it, and then bolted it back into position where it belongs. So that axle is once again where it needs to be. This left side is essentially done, except for the torque on that axle nut. I need to tighten that up, but I'm not going to do that until I put the wheel on because I just don't have a, a yeah, I haven't got a way to do it with the, uh, the lug pattern that's on that hub. So I'm kind of in a stuck position here. So I'm just gonna have to do it the old fashioned way and the old fashioned way is put that wheel on, have the thing sitting on the ground, have somebody standing on the brakes and I'll stick a socket on it, a long breaker bar, and I'll jump up and down on it. <laughs> so that's the best I'm gonna be able to do with what we got. I got no other means to, to torque that thing down properly. Anyways, that's neither here nor there, we'll get to that in a minute. Otherwise, that side is essentially done, but when we go over to the right side, you'll notice that the caliper is clocked in at the top here, it needs to be clocked into the back. And I also mentioned that those bolts were digging into the uh, rotor because they're entirely too long going in the back. While I've got that apart, I'm also gonna make sure the spacer is on the correct side of the axle nut, because if it's on the wrong side like this one is, or was, that's the reason why the brake caliper wasn't seating properly on that disc. In fact, I was wondering if he was working at all. Everything was just wampus. Everything was just all kinds of crooked. So this side, I don't know. It looks like it's biting into the rotor properly. It has an even wear pattern on it. That side did not, and not at all. So anyway, we'll fix that. It's gonna need a longer brake line just like the other side did. So I'll put that on there, I'll make one up for it. In fact, I found one in the trunk on this car. This car had a lot of spare truck. This car had a lot of spare parts in the trunk. It was mostly rear axle stuff, uh, brake lines and all that other stuff. So. People had criticized me heavily for leaving all that junk in the trunk, but you know what? I'm glad he did because all of it's available to service this car. And I've been pulling just things out of the trunk, you know, left and right just to fix this thing. And if I didn't have that and he had it in his garage or, you know, somewhere else at his house, it wouldn't be available to me. 
I don't know, the, the comments that people make, it's just, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> so anyway, we'll put this back together. The wheel's gonna fit a little closer to the body now because that spacer is on the opposite side of the hub. It's on the outside versus the inside. So that will put the wheel a little closer. Hopefully everything still clears. I don't think it's going to be a problem because it looks like there was actually a whole lot of space around this. You can see on this side. So even if it is spaced wrong and it's gonna move in about three quarter of an inch, you know, 916, something like that, it uh, should still fit okay. I don't see why we'd have a problem. Anyway, gonna have a few more sips of my lunch. <laughs> and uh, as soon as we get a shady spot over here when the sun goes behind the house, which you can see the the line right here of the house shadow. Probably be about another 30 minutes or so. I'll be back out here and working on this thing and get this thing squared up. I also need to fix that exhaust. That just bothers me. I'll just unbolt it and straighten it. And then I need to get behind the engine as well and change out the engine mounts. Those big pucks that hold underneath the transmission there are, uh, they're torn. When this thing got hit, that engine shifted and it, it ripped them. Not to say they're even in good shape to begin with. They probably weren't, but nonetheless, they need to be fixed too. All right, here's a little guy. Down. Little ice box. Having a break with his daddy outside. One of the first few times you've been out. Yeah, I don't usually bring you outside. Oh, going after my teeth again. <laughs> the good boy. Yeah, your daddy's all whiskey sloshed and giving you some love. Uh huh. See, them waddles are starting to grow under there. Look at this. You didn't have that a week ago. No, you did not. <laughs> good baby. He's such a good baby. All right, I've repositioned the jack to make it easier to get out from under there. Gotta remove the center cap so we can get to that axle nut. And we gotta get that wheel mounted up on there. I don't like putting the rims on this one because they're not hub-centric at all. Yay! Well, that's a huge improvement where we started out at. <laughs> Just to see it back on the ground again. With the wheels effectively straight. Yeah. In fact, this one looks like it's towed in even more than this one over here. So I just eyeballed the alignment, but I probably did a better job. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, we're looking good. I guess next thing on the list is uh, attacking that wheel over there and figuring out exactly what the hell's wrong with it. All right, let's see if any of these are loose. I know you guys want to see what I want to see. How loose is this axle nut? Is it going to come right off? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. I don't believe it. <laughs> wow, he was driving it like this. <sighs> All right, well, we're going to fix that. That's just, I, I should have, knowing that this car was put together as stupidly as it was with all the wiring problems that we had, all the loose nuts and bolts everywhere on this car. I should have known better, and I should have checked the rear axle nuts. That's uh, that's on me. However, in hindsight, had this axle nut have come off, the disc and hub is kind of captive by way of the caliper. So there might have been a little wobbling, but it never would have fully come off. There certainly would have been a lot of racket and a lot of noise, and I'm sure that Rob would have been complaining about something but yeah that's a uh... <laughs> okay All right, one more bolt here I forgot to loosen the uh, brake line I guess we'll do that last <laughs> these are the bolts that were too long going through the back of that caliper. And you can see the tips of them are a little rusted. And around the outside of them, they're a little bit shiny for me rolling the car backwards and forwards just a little bit. But they're actually chewing into the back of the uh, disc. 
All right, we're gonna shorten it before they go back on. All right, before we even do that, let's loosen up this brake line here. Something smells funny out here. Somebody's cutting a lawn and I smell something, something green, some kind of herbal something. This side, of course, was not hit. So anything that we find on here that's just goofy is all previous owner yeah, stuff. Like finger turn. Well, there it is. Barely can finger turn it. All right, it's out. All right, caliper is off. This one looks to be in pretty good shape and it's nice and worn evenly. So this one I would suggest was probably installed properly. However, again, I don't like the position in which this is clocked. So what we're gonna do here we're going to take this cap off, reclock the caliper, so it's at 9 o'clock instead of at noon. That was a 14, if I'm not mistaken, right? I thought that was a 14. Right? At the 14. Oh my god, where's my 14? At the 14. That's the 14. This cover was put on improperly also. Although, even if it's put on wrong, I don't think it really matters that much. Not so much on a IRS rear suspension anyway, on a swing axle. Again, where it holds the fluid in and the transmission because it runs down the full length of the uh, axle tubes. needs to be able to drain out the little dingleberry in the bottom. But this should be clocked on here like this. And this should, well, everything actually is 90 degrees out. That's how it's supposed to be, just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back in then. hardest thing on this side is going to be getting the uh, brake line fitted because I don't think I have one that reaches for this side so I gotta make one and not that it's hard it's just it's a process Pack that in just a second. All right, this side is actually quite well greased up and everything's nice and clean. So I'm just gonna put this right back on. It's other than that being clocked in the wrong direction and the bolts being entirely too wrong, long, this side is actually not in too bad a shape. Okay, Put our spacer here on the outside. Good. And then the caliper is the last thing that's gonna go back on. It's gonna go in that position, approximately. Yeah, everything feels feels like it's gonna fit just fine. But I do need to cut these bolts down. So let's approximate how short I need to cut them. Shit. I gotta take about half an inch off of these things. That's a lot. <laughs> All right, I've cut them. Look down in there now, you can see light. You see the bolt protruding through just a little bit, but it's nowhere as near the rotor anymore. And the other one's just like that down beneath it. Anyway, we're good to go. I gotta set up a brake line to it. Obviously this one is just way too short. And then we can call it done. I just gotta torque everything back together and uh, lead the brakes out. All right, very boring and uneventful, but I found a brake line that was up under the hood, laying in Rob's junk parts and it was brand new so I just put it in so that covers this side 
Okay, all I gotta do is torque down the caliper bolts and then mount the wheel back on it and then we gotta torque the axle nuts and then we're ready to bleed brakes. I might just bleed the brakes first so that way I can have somebody stand on the brakes while I'm torquing the axle nuts. Cause that makes sense, right? Yeah, that's what we'll do. Now we go. <clears throat> All right, good. Okay, where we left off is we got the whole rear end reassembled, new CV joint, new trailing arm, new spring plate, changed out the brake line because I re-clocked the brake caliper to the rear rather than on the top, so that way the bleeder screw actually lets air out of it. Did the same thing on this side, re-clocked it and put a new brake line. Discovered both the axle nuts on this side and that side were both loose, so this car was going to eventually lose a wheel. But again, in hindsight, those calipers may have actually retained it, but it doesn't mean the car wouldn't have been wobbly or done all kinds of weird rubbing noises, which is something Rob said he was experiencing. So maybe it was that, or maybe it was the fact that those caliper bolts were entirely too long were run right into the side of the rotor. Yeah, geniuses, whoever owned this car before. We also fixed the axle spacing on this side because the spacer was on the wrong side, which was causing the caliper to be out of all kinds of weird alignment issues. So anyway, that's fixed. Up front though, we have to put in the residual pressure valve. And what this does is it traps about three PSI in the rear braking system. So when you get off the brakes, all that fluid doesn't immediately run back into the mass of cylinder. This will keep just a little bit of pressure back there. And what that does, is it will raise your brake pedal. Rob was complaining he had to double pump his brakes. This will eliminate that. Also, the brake problems that we fixed in the back, seeing as how that one had all kinds of long travel on it because it was all out of alignment and it was all bent up and it had problems. So anyway, you had to double pump it to make the pads move into position because the caliper was all stupid. So in order to do that, all that pumping would eventually make the caliper move on its plate that it's mounted on, which is just ridiculous that this was even having to happen, but that's what made it work. And then of course, when you let go, everything moves back and all that fluid comes back. So you have to double pump it or even triple pump, he said sometimes. This again, should solve that. Plus what we fixed in the back. I do have one on Ruby. I will be putting one on Eleanor, just the same. And uh, I guess that's about it for now. So let's go ahead and get jumping on this thing. I've already got the front end jacked up because the master cylinder is right underneath here and easy to get to, fairly easy to get to. Not so much for a guy of my size, but we're gonna get up under there and we're gonna switch this thing out. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I'm done. Not while I'm doing it, because I just can't get under there easily with a camera. So here we go. In this little short brake line, it's going to be used as an adapter for this. It's actually made from the right side brake line that I removed. Um, so simply I just shortened it re-flared the end and put the end back onto it. So this will give me a nice little curly cue to get this thing installed. A little word of advice on these, if you do get one of them for your rear disc brake application, is there's a number two on it somewhere. Well, I did see it. Usually there's also an arrow, there it is, a number two. That shows the output side. Normally there's an arrow that would be facing out. So this side connects to the master cylinder, this side goes out to your brakes. There's no arrow in this one, and I don't know why. Maybe it's a misprint, because usually the two is printed a little higher up here. I might have just missed when they printed it. But anyway, this goes on there. This does unscrew. See, this is hex-headed. So make sure you tighten this down. On the one that we did on B's car, and I've never experienced this before, but I never thought to tighten it, um, it actually blew a leak between there, and when I went and tightened it, it had almost half a turn on it. And because of that, the seat never seated properly in there again, so we had to return it. But anyway, yeah, just make sure it's snug and you should be okay. But yeah, B's was just really, really loose and it wasn't my doing, it's just the way it came. Anyway, good, it didn't need much. I mean, I barely moved the, the nut at all when I tightened it down. But this brake line will go into here, a little short guy, and then the output goes to the long brake line to the discs. All right, there you guys are. Rear brake line out through the blue thing to the rear brake line going backwards. And yes, the brake line switch was in my way and I had to pull the switch out in order to do the job, but uh, there it is. Hopefully we get no leaks. I don't think we will, I don't usually. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a leak on any of the lines I've ever installed myself. Any things I've had help with is a different story, but if I did it, it never leaked. <laughs> Duck man, you smug son of a bitch. Look what you did to yourself this time. Yeah, that's the first time I ever had one leak. Bummer.
Well, I had to replace it with another line. But upon further investigation, I discovered my flaring tool is broken! And that when I flared this last end, well, that was the one that it failed on. So it just was improperly flared, and that's the reason why I leave. All right, we got them brakes bled out. Single man operation, you just pump the brakes, and then you stick a two by four against the brake pedal and the seat. Just kind of wedge it in there and hold the pedal to the floor. And go around and just bleed the brakes one by one. It's a long process, but it gets it done. All right. The alternator light also wasn't working correctly. Turned out it was just a bunch of rusty connections out on the engine because Rob doesn't keep this thing covered in the rain. I've been warning him, but you know, he does what he does because he's Rob. Anyway, this thing starts up just fine. You know? Oh, uh, you know what? I disconnected the coil while I was dicking around with electrical stuff. So that way I did not fry the points. Yes, there it is. Look at that. That'll start it. Okay. Back in the car. Hey, watch this, you guys. Oops, try one more time. I also fixed the fuel gauge because the vibrator that was on the back side of it broke. I just happened to have another 72 Super Beetle here in the yard, so I pulled the vibe off of that one and put it on there. So Rob's almost out of gas. And we're not gonna drive it too much, but the brake pedal feels good. It feels just like it does on the fastback. Got the shifter fixed. I can easily find reverse now. Backing up. Make sure we don't run over the chickens. Don't hit the fucking pole. <laughs> There's the pole. Yeah, brakes feel really good. I think Rob is gonna be very, very pleased with that. All right, the engine's cold. It is a little bit of a polar bear. Once this thing gets going, though, it's quick. I think it's a 1776. I couldn't tell you what kind of cam is in it. It doesn't sound too awfully lopy. And it does run just a stock carburetor, but... It has that typical 009 uh, hesitation. But that's typical of a centrifugal-only advanced distributor. It needs a vacuum advanced distributor on it. All Volkswagen cars do. Only industrial engines are supposed to have a 009, and I don't care what anybody says, 009 runs like crap. All right, here we go. Coming up to a stop sign. We're gonna jam the brakes on, see if we can lock them wheels up. Answer is yes. Couldn't do that before. Why can't I find first? There we go. The alignment's a little goofy. It's going to need a proper alignment job, something that I can't do. turn signals. Rob broke the turn signal switch off of the steering column. 
It's a China switch and it's just kind of held on by a fancy hose clamp really, but it wasn't designed to go on this car, so this car, um, I guess I kept rejecting it and because Rob is rough and does stupid things to stuff, that was the reason why I messed it up. But anyway, it's fine now. I put a stainless steel band around the steering column and then uh, clamped it down to that so it's extra solid. Let's just say if he messes it up, that's on him. <laughs> brakes. I just got a couple of other little things I need to go over and once I've got them all squared away everything on this car should be good to go and I'll give it back to Rob. Thanks everybody for watching. Licky, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly and we'll see you guys next time. Appreciate it.